so um, I was in the city doing some filming, but I just thought before I go, um, I'll just make a quick video about an issue that I wanted to talk about, and that's xenophobia in the Gambia. Um, my grandmother's name was Nene Isaac, or my great grandmother's name was Nene Isaac. She's fuller, and she comes from around Basse or behind Basse or something. And she was a midwife, and she was the only midwife serving the towns of Gunju and Sukuta and all the, you know, villages around. And so when a woman's having a baby, they'll send for Nene Isaac, and Nene Isaac would go there. And she brought up my mom, and my mom said sometimes they'll walk, <laughs> you know, for ages to get to <coughs> um, mother and deliver baby. So um, at one stage, Nene Isaac got tired, and so she asked for... Um, a clinic to be built in one location in Gunju specifically so that women who were having babies were coming to her so she didn't have to keep walking to all these villages and so um, they built the clinic in Gunju and that's why that clinic is there because of my great-grandmother Nene Isaac and um, so when my my mom got to a certain age or whatever she went to Ghana and she got married to a Ghanaian and she had myself and my sister, but the marriage didn't work out. So my mom came back home to the Gambia. I was less than three years old. I grew up in the Gambia. It was all I knew. It's the culture that I'm most comfortable with. It's the languages that I speak. It's the food that I eat and know how to cook. It's where I am a fish and that's my water. And so obviously when I went to university in England and I graduated, I went back home because Gambia is where I know. Gambia is all is home for me but then my first experience with xenophobia happened when I was working as head of marketing I was running the marketing department to Trust Bank Limited and um, the social security were offering plots of land in, at Brisbane um, at a really reasonable rate so I applied I'm a Gambian I didn't think anything of it until I got a letter saying well you're, you're not a Gambian your name says you're not a Gambian so you're not supposed to apply and you can't get this property I looked at that letter and it was the first, I was I was actually shocked because I had never considered myself anything other than Gambian and um, I could have just taken that letter to my MD because my MD obviously we were very close trust bank and social security were very close social security sat on the on the board of trust bank and as head of marketing I'd done some work some projects with um, social security so I could have actually pursued it. I could have gone to my MD and said, can you just go and talk to you know, the MD of Social Security and sort this out? So it could have been sorted out, but I just, I just didn't want to because I just don't think that there are certain things that I feel I deserve. Maybe it's a silly thing, but I'm simply worth it. And I will not fight for that. There are things that I fight for and there are things that I think I don't have to explain. So I let it go. And then, of course, I did. I went and married someone who wasn't Gambian. He was British, Nigerian descent. And um, his parents are Nigerian. He was born and bred in England. And but he has a Nigerian name, Aguntala. And obviously that was a problem for a lot of people, which I kind of ignored, but I knew it was there when it became an issue was um, we wanted to build, you know, a, a massive project. We wanted to do a huge, huge project in the Gambia. And we had to work with um, two government agencies to do it. And we had meetings with these agencies and everything. And then they had to go back and um, kind of meet and decide whether they wanted to go ahead with us. And do you know one of the reasons that they came back and said was oh you know they're not even gambian where does oguntola fit into the gambia where does Oforiata belong in the gambia and because of that they didn't support our bid to have this massive project we would not which would not just have benefited us but would have benefited a whole lot of gambians because that is how i work i work to support other people to create legacy by helping others so it was that was a shock to me again and I didn't pursue it either I was I didn't bother about it but 
in the conversation in the current political conversation that we're having in the gambia now i see it rare it's ugly head and i think i need to speak on it <laughs> i need to say you need to stop it um you can't be here we can't be here in the west and say make room for us give us equal opportunities give us equal space give us an equal voice and yet in our own african countries we deny it to our own african brothers and sisters it makes no sense we're nothing but hypocrites but what i'm saying to you is we need to stop xenophobia it hurts actually it hurts people there is no way that one african is better than the other it's like it makes no sense strength is in unity unity is strength and diversity is strength. And it's not diversity of thought alone, but it's diversity of, of representation, of physical representation. All right, that's it.